Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, promised I'll make a video of how I do a water change using the dosing pump over there. So here we go, right? So let me show you what's going on. I have my hose that's gonna go out and dump outside. I have the little quick connector already on here. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen here. First things first, I'm gonna turn off my top off water. Because if I don't, obviously, I'm just gonna fill with clean water. We don't want that. Close that out, okay? Um, now, over here, I, or, I'm, I use, that's pH down, that's silica, that's CalMag, and that's Athena Cleans. Whatever you do doesn't matter, since my dosing pump only takes four, to dose four at a time. I already got these four ready, but if you notice, there's nothing else in there. This is not how you do it, okay? So if you're gonna stop the video here, please do not dose it like this. What is happening here is I already measured them out, left it here, and when the reservoir is dumped out and the clean water is in here, I'm gonna take some clean water, mix it with this, okay? And then add it back that way so I'm not just dumping straight pH down, mixing it at the same time with CalMag, for example, so they don't, I don't know, chemically imbalance it or whatever. So anyway, right, so here we are. Our old PPM is right there. Temperatures and stuff like that, that's my pump. I'm gonna stop the pump, boom. Let me pause the video for one second. Let me connect this to this. I need my hand. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully it's still rolling. Yep. So I had this already. This is already always, this stays on here all the time. So this is already ready to go. As soon as I click this button, which I'm going to do right now, it's going to start dumping the water out. Okay. Now, um, in, in here, I think I showed this in my last video. I used this to put at the end of my system in the back so I can measure the PPM of the water because I don't have bottom drains on my buckets. There is no bottom drain so no matter what I do a certain amount of water stays like where the bulkhead is right there. It will never go below the bulkhead. Okay so what I do is I'm gonna bring a hose here later once this water level drops all the way down. I start adding regular water in here while it's pumping from the back and dumping it out gonna start adding new water from here until the whole thing has been dumped out and the easiest way we're gonna find out is you know we have a ppm p i mean ec ppm meter here but for you to know if the water is clean you want to make sure like the last bucket in your system you know is, is the same level ppm as your tap water right or whatever water you're adding so that's why i have this guy right now it's sitting in a h202 bath because i used it on the last one i want to make sure there's no like you know bacteria or whatever on there so Right here we are. I'm gonna pause the video. This can take like 20, 30 minutes. I'm not gonna make you wait, and I'll be back once this uh, thing is drained out. Okay? See you soon. All right, guys, I'm back. It's maybe halfway gone already. I want to talk about one or two things real quick before I forget. Now, uh, adding back silica. Uh, I mean, dosing with silica. I went. I had to buy this a little more expensive version. Uh, it's Rhino Skin because this is uh, pH balance, so it's like five, around 5.8, I don't know, 5.9 pH. A lot of them, so be careful, a lot of them, like the general hydroponics version of it, is like pH 8 or 9 or some really high number. And if you end up or try to dose it with that, you're gonna end up like spiking your pH really high in your reservoir. Right now, my little ones, I can't show it, just to keep YouTube you know, safe or whatever. Uh, they're small so they have no roots. I'm not really worried about it But if you have full roots in your buckets all the way down and as soon as you start dosing it No matter how much you're you know, you're dosing it. So you're not just straight dumping it in there doesn't matter It's gonna go hit it's your overall water uh, pH is gonna rise and you don't want it to go really high you could affect the roots I'm not a botanist. I'm not sure what would happen, but I did not risk it another cool thing that I wanted to you know talk to you guys while this is draining is this little guy right here I'll put a link I guess or something or you just buy it on Amazon this measures how much water goes in there now I had already pre-measured it I think I told you guys when you're doing it when there's nothing in the reservoir everything is empty you're adding water use one of these to measure out how much water is total in your system to the net pot or an inch below the net pot or whatever so you always know like, hey, I have 65 gallons of water. When do I stop when I'm filling this? You don't want to keep opening the lids with the plants in it and checking to see if the water's too low, too high. It's a waste of time, okay? Just measure it once, mark it with a permanent marker, you know, get a silver one, it's black, right? 
that's what I do. So I wanted to touch up on those two things as it's draining. I'm like halfway down now, you know, it's draining pretty quick. So I'll come back once again when um, it's already got my hose attached and it's ready to go. As soon as my water level drops here, I'll turn this on because I don't want to stop the flow. I wanted to see things this way, right? Right now this is pulling from all the way in the back of my system. So emptying the water out. As soon as it drops to that bulkhead level down there, that's when I know the water level is dropping a little low and you don't want to get too low. You don't want your water pump to suck in air. These are not high end, you know, water pumps. They don't self prime. And you're going to wait for like a lot of time for it to pull the air out again and yada yada. So we don't want to do that. Oh, and if you have a chiller like I have, don't forget to turn it off. I, I did. You're just wasting power because we're not going to need it now. Okay. Let's see. Let's turn off. There we go. That's off. So that's what I mean, right? So when this starts running, after a while, this is the kind of system you have, you get used to it. For me, it's about uh, 40 gallons of water that I put in here, dump out of here. It usually takes about 30 to 40 gallons of water to clean the whole system out. But everybody's different, you know, like I said, right? You gotta get one of these if you wanna be precise, drop it in the last bucket, uh, you know, and, and turn it on and make sure, like I said, right, your PPM from your tap water or whatever you're using uh, is the same in the last reservoir than it is here that means you pretty much 95% of the old nutrient water is gone okay all right I'll be back all right you guys I'm back looks like we're almost ready as you can see the water level now dropped to the bulkhead now it's opening up uh, the the way my system is set up my area here is sloped that way so I know there's more water in the last buckets than it is here but this is a good time to start off so, like I said, right, we're just gonna turn this on. Oh, one second, I'll be right back. I haven't turned the water on. All right, I got it turned down now. This is zeroed out. Let's go. This is how I do my water changes. What I'll do is I'll just rinse this place out while I'm at it real quick. Okay. Now, like I said, right, so this is gonna go now. I'll put this in here. Cool. You can see it's showing you already that's dropping. Obviously, I'm adding uh, three. It's tap water with the three-stage filter, so this should be around 300. And, I mean, 200, 180, and like I don't know, a couple minutes. Once this whole place has been cleaned out, okay. So it's dumping it out now in the back. Uh, yeah. One one important thing, guys. If you're ever gonna do this style of what I'm doing, you need to make sure you have a decent pump, okay. I pay I think 130 bucks for this one, so you could pump it out at the same speed or roughly the same speed as you're adding water or else it's going to be like filling up and warming up that's not going to work anyway i'm going to pause the video i'll be back when this whole thing is cleaned out like i said about 20 more gallons and we should be ready to go okay be back hey guys uh continuing from here where i was talking about placing this in your last bucket this is my last bucket over here in my line okay from here goes up to the pump and fills out again like i said right so I drop this in here, okay? Now if I turn it on, okay, you're gonna see, it's gonna show 721 PPM. If you remember from the earlier in the video, it's pretty much identical to what the blue lab was showing in the beginning. So now in the front is 200 PPM, but back here is still 700, obviously, because not enough water has come through here. Uh, another thing is you could turn off your air stones if you have them in here during this process, just to save money if it's on, Mine are, on all, mine are all on automatic and this cheaper version, these things can misread your PPM if there's a lot of air bubbles inside, okay? Causes a lot of fluctuation. So since my entire setup is on smart switches, I guess right here, boom, click that button, no more air. Now, please do make sure if you're gonna turn your air stones off, wait till your water level drops pretty low and your air pump is a little bit higher than the bucket level, or what's gonna happen is you might have a backflow if you turn off your air before your water level drops, so just the water will suck, it's happened to me, it will suck up and just spill everywhere. Okay, I have my other one, okay. I'll turn my other air stone off, so anyway. As you can see, now it's 716, that's really nothing, it's just probably misreading. Oh, one more thing about these cheap little meters. They have two ends, they have this red one here, and this is, this is designed for an RO water system, so it's not really designed for it, I'm just using it and it works for me, right? So don't put both of them in the tank. 
You know, it's like, hey, whatever, who cares? I'll drop it in there. No. For some reason, they misread if you do that. I don't know why. But since I have two different systems anyway, I use, I marked it on here. Huh? One, two, system one, system two. But even if you don't, you only have one system, just don't use more than one lead in the same place at the same time. I don't know why, but they malfunction. As you can see, our PPM is already dropping. All right, guys, I'll be back when this thing goes to the same as my tap bar. That means everything's clean, and I'll show you guys how to do the whole um, auto top-off thingy. Hey you guys, I'm back real quick. I want to show something that's kind of cool. I think this is cool for me. I have a, I told you guys, I have a smart system set up for the entire grow. Um, so you can see here, it says leak sensor one, two, three, four, five. These detect leaks. They're down here also, but they also have a temperature sensor. So I'm always aware of what the temperature is on the lower level of the um, ground. And then I have uh, two smart sensors: sensor one, sensor two. Those are our canopy level those are temperatures you have the door temperature I have humidity sensors also then I have my I have an Aon energy monitor that monitors the total energy I reset it every growth so like for example in the seven days I started I've already used 440 kilowatt hours this includes everything air conditioning everything that's using one drop of electricity is counted to the total I I use this and I plug into a spreadsheet that tells me how much it's totally costing me everything. I have my grow lights, humidifiers, UVC lights, see like the air, two air pumps I turned off. That Those two are off right there. Then I have my, you know, water pumps, chillers, everything. So this is pretty cool actually, right guys? Uh, anyway, just want to show it to you guys. I'll be back when that thing is uh, done filling up. Sorry guys, I keep going back and forth. But I want to show you guys one more thing. I made this spreadsheet. Uh, to keep track of how much nutrients I use, how much it costs me, or just I'm picky like that, I'm interested. As you, I'm gonna put a link to the spreadsheet. If you guys wanna use it, feel free to download it and use it, I made it. Uh, so whatever, your tracks over here, your day, time, uh, your daily PPMs, I log it, pH, and then over here, like I have Athena Clean, Silica, Micro, Grow, CalMag, whatever I use, okay? I just punch in whatever amount I add, and then it adds it all up for me. Like today we're doing a water change, so there's a water change column, and if I plug in a Y over here, as you'll notice, it's gonna highlight the entire row. So when I'm looking back through rows and rows, I could tell, okay, I did a water change over here. See, like, I like I log in, all oh, my lights were at 30. Oh, what's going on with my camera? Sorry, guys. It won't focus for some reason. There we go. See, like, I log in, all oh, lights at 30%, lights at 40%, you know, pH down. The cool part comes here, right? Look, right down here on the next page, everything you enter on the other page it gives you the averages of your pHs and water temps and then it adds up all the chemicals you've used that you have added and it gives you a total of everything you used like with this water change I'm at seventeen dollars and thirty cents so far it costs right now you look over here I, ha I could enter my kilowatt hours used like I showed you on my smart home thing and then it gives me electricity usage okay right here and then my random expenses because I bought little ones so I put that on there so, so far, as of day one of starting, I have spent this much amount of money for this grow. I don't know. thought you guys might like it. Anyway, I'm going to pause it again and come back when the water level is filled up. Alrighty. Alright, guys. I'm back. So, um, I just stopped the hose. We pumped in 65 gallons of water from this end and pretty much dumped it out. As you can see, my blue lab is reading 220. It's my tap water. It fluctuates. Now, if I go over here and show you guys the little meter thingy you'll notice it's reading 260 and this is 10 20 dollars i mean whatever but so it's going to be pretty much right i mean you could wait until it reads um <clears throat> until it actually reads 200 or 220 to match the blue lab over here but i think it's just a waste of water because i think it's not a very accurate uh reading thingy so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn off the water pump Stop dumping the water out because I think it's pretty clean now. As clean as it's going to get. Notice my pH is 7.6. Water temperature is 80. Unacceptable. But we'll chill that out in a second. So I'm going to stop the dumping of the water. Pressing this button. Boom. We hear that. Now I'm going to pause the video, guys. I'm going to unhook this. Put this back in here and start filling up more water until I reach my designated level over here. And I'll be right back. All right. So what's going on now, right? So it's filling back up. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is I'm gonna start adding some of this clean water, putting water in here, getting them ready, and I'm gonna start dosing them, 
since they're not nutrients, that much nutrients, so it's fine. Uh, usually I like to wait till it's all, all the way full, then start dosing it, but since it's just pH down and, you know, silica, and like I said, my plants are super new, they barely have any roots, if like one or two each, so you won't even touch the roots, I'm okay, but in general, you wanna do the, ad, you wanna do the dosing when your water's full, so it's mixing with the whole 65 gallons, not like adding, you know, 400 ml of micro, even though you're dosing it to only 30 gallons of water, then your PPM will be like 13, 1400, and you can turn around and damage the roots or something like that. Anyway, one more thing I wanted to mention that even though this way of doing it wastes water, because obviously I'm dumping it out. If I had any, like, you know, a bottom, like the current culture system that costs 10 times more than my system, if I had a bottom drain, I wouldn't have to pump water through the system. 65 gallons of water just got wasted. But the only benefit that I just, you know, maybe I'm convincing myself, but the benefit that I see of doing this, my chiller is pretty much always cleaned out because that water being dumped goes through the same thing, goes through my chiller and then dumps out. So at least I'm cleaning my chiller too. Anyway, be right back. I'm gonna go add some water to these guys and then uh, when, I, when this thing is up and running, I'll show you guys the dozer. Be right back. All right, you guys, finally, pump, dozing pump is on. So what I did, like I said, right, I added uh, some clean water from here and here, mixed it up a little bit. So now we're adding pH down. Uh, silica, CalMag, and Athena cleans, you know, your order. I'm not an expert, so don't, you know, go off of my order of doing things or whatever, but, but since I only could dose four at a time, I'm doing these four first, and then I'll, uh, you, normally you don't want to dose the pH down in the beginning at all, because your pH will drop once you add the uh, nutrients, but since I know I'm going to end up giving about 180 ml of pH down, I'm only giving 80 now, so if you can see over here, pH is 6.4. It's not gonna be a big deal. Now my water level, I stopped this. Now how do I know when I'm here? When I initially filled this system up and got it set up to go, I made sure this valve was basically, I unscrewed it and leveled it so it's stuck to the level I like. So if I open the water now and it starts filling up, that means I haven't filled it up all the way, right? See how it's filling water? That means it's not where it needs to be. So I can close this now and put some more of this water from the hose until it's at that level. Where are we at? 95? Where's that? 95 gallons? It's not a big deal. But keep this in mind that I have about almost a gallon of water in between these guys. That's about 900 ml of water I added in each one. That's about 4,000, which is about four ga a gallon of water. So anyway, that's what I'm doing now. Um, I guess honestly this video ends here because uh, this is it. You know, once I'm done with this set, I'll take it out. Uh, I'll wait till this thing circulates for like 15, 20 minutes so it mixes all this up as best as it can. Now you should know how much water comes out of here. You can measure it. I've measured it before and like, you know, timing it into a bucket, a five gallon bucket to see how fast it fills the five gallon bucket. Now I know that in, you know, X amount of minutes, I recirculate the entire system. So now that I know that if I wait, I don't know if I wait like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's going to circulate the entire system three, four times. I'm okay with that, okay? One thing I wanted to mention, I have said to people, like I don't know if I said in another video, I use a UV light to sterilize the stuff in it. Oh, that came loose, no big deal. Uh, if you do use a UV light, you gotta keep an eye on your iron. If you start noticing iron deficiency, you gotta supplement it. Just a heads up, because uh, UV light breaks down iron, okay? Just a heads up, so off topic. All right guys, if you have any questions, uh, post them, and uh, I'll try to help you out. This is it, right? So this is how easy it is, right? Like, uh, give me another minute, let me say something here, right? So I hook this up to my outgoing hose, turn it on, walk away. Come back 10, 15 minutes later when the water level's down, turn my hose on, walk away. Wait 10, 15 minutes till it just dumps everything out, cleans the whole system out, come back, turn this off, disconnect the hose, turn this back on again, let it start filling up, okay? And I do my own thing while it's doing it again, like as far as wash edges go, measure these out, have the dozing pump start dozing it and this is all i do for water change and i'll be back again in a week doing the same thing again so every seven days is what i do okay all right guys like i said if you have any questions please feel free to ask and i'll try to help you out take care happy growing